Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Alexandro. I work at the Qt company. Uh, this talk is going to be technical, I guess, and it's going to deal with build system stuff, so not C++ code. So if you don't like that, you can leave now. <laughs> and this is kind of going to be like a showcase of what's possible today. But before I start, I'd like to ask how many people use CMake? OK. And does anybody use VC package? Less hands. OK. So let's get started. Uh, what's our starting point? Well, let's start with an application, an existing application, the Qt Qt Controls 2 example text editor. It's, you build it with QMake. It uses a bunch of C++ and QML. And yeah, like I said, it's a QMake project. And we're going to define like some goals of what we want to achieve. The first one, well, we want to build it with CMake. The second one, we would like to build it as a static application so that we don't have to deal with deploying DLLs, shared libraries, resources, whatever else. And as another interesting thing, how to use a third-party package from, in this case, VC package, because we all know in the C++ world, everybody hates package managers. Everybody has their own way of getting their package that they need, shipping it, blah, blah. And of course, we would like it to target multiple platforms, for which Qt is well known, right? So let's start. Uh, this is the profile for the project in QMake. It's pretty simple. It says, build an app. It's going to be called Text Editor. Uses Quick Controls 2, sometimes widgets. Depending on if we're class compiling, uh, use like the touch resources. And of course, the text editor, CPP file, and the QRC for the images and other resources. This is what it looked like, a, like a banal conversion from QMake to CMake. The first bit says what CMake version we want to use. Then we say, OK, it's text editor, going to use C++ language. We want to find Qt, specifically the quick controls to and widgets packages. We want to enable auto mock on RTRCC, which is the CMake way of saying, please run mock on my CPP files or header files. Please run RCC on my QRC files. Then you say add executable, which is the CMake way of saying, I want to build an executable. This, these are the CPP files that are supposed to be compiled and linked, and the QRC file, which is supposed to be processed to get all the resources which are inside. Then if we're cross-compiling, we want to add the touch define to all the CPP files. And then we want to link against the Qt libraries. So quick controls to and widgets if it's there. This is basically a banal transformation from QMake. OK, first goal we said static builds. How do we achieve that? This is how you used to achieve it before Qt 5.14. You have to specify manually all these other libraries that you need to link against. In this specific case, I was on Mac, so you need to link all the frameworks. You need to link all the static libraries that are built, like the third-party ones, Harfas, LibPNG, all the uh, helper uh, libraries. What else? Uh, the manually the QPA plugin, manually the Qt Quick plugin. And then you need this init plugin CPP file, which basically has all these macros initialized this plugin, this plugin, this plugin. It's a mess. Now multiply this by the number of platforms that you want to support. Not nice. This is how it looks in Qt 5.14 and above. You need two changes. You need to add, I want to find a package called Qt, uh, QML import scanner. And at the bottom, you say import QML plugins. Done. And what this takes care of behind the scenes, it runs the, what's it called? A QML import scanner executable. It generates files that it needs. It links them. You don't need to specify all the manual stuff that you had to do before. And for the regular plugins, which are not QML, you don't need to do anything like written there. Basically, the default set, which QMake usually uh, links in, it's just going to link in that by default without saying anything. There's also a plug, uh, an API to say, I want to link also this additional plugin, but I forgot to add that to the slide. So, OK, next thing, third-party libraries. Well, what would be a useful third-party library for a text editor? I would say encryption is a nice feature. Let's encrypt all the content. Encryption libraries are usually complicated to build or also complicated to use, use properly. And I just said, OK, why not? I need something. 
which C++ library provides encryption. There's a library called Bottom. I guess it's not very known, but it's a C++ library. You can build it for all the regular configs that you would think, like desktop and mobile and embedded and stuff. It has a pretty nice API. And I said, okay, oh, and what's interesting, I'll say about it. Well, it's, it's BSD license, so if you care about license, it's nice for you. It's written in C++, like I said, supports uh, all the mobile platforms and desktop platforms. And where to get it? Well, you can probably guess, VC package. Uh, VC package is a tool that is provided by Microsoft for basically building from source uh, libraries and using them in your projects. So they are more of a build from source package manager rather than download this pre-built binary from somewhere and use it. It has many recipes for like, I don't know, over 1,000 packages probably. It supports Windows, Mac, and Linux. And because VC package is written in C++ and it's built with, well, it's not built, the recipes that uh, you use like as the instructions on how to build the packages, they are written with CMake script. So if you're familiar with CMake, you can kind of figure out how to write or read recipes. Yeah. And by the way, it provides a recipe for the package that I need. So let's use how to build Bottom? Well, I assume that you have VC package installed. Like you can go to their uh, web page. They say what do you need to run. It's like basically a bootstrap script. You download something, you run something, VC package is installed. And when you want to build the package, well, you go into the build folder of where your VC package is installed. You export a triplet, which is a concept where they say, uh, I want to build a package for this platform, this architecture. And then you say VC package install bottom. This will start CMake underneath, build it for debug and release, install it, ready to use. How do you use bottom? Well, that's a little bit more complicated because bottom is built with a self-written Python build system, which means that they do not provide CMake config files or a find package basically to just say use bottom. So we need to write our own file, which is called find button. This is a concept from CMake where you say, if somebody writes find package button, how do I find it? Which files does it provide like headers, include paths, libraries? In this case, the first bit says find path, include dears, and it looks for the button h file. When it finds it, it will say, okay, this is where the includes are. Then we do find library that finds the library, or either the shared libraries or the static libraries. Then you have a little bit of CMake boilerplate, and basically, if the package was found, you add a target in CMake, which has associated uh, include paths and the location for the library. So when you use the library, it automatically uses the information that was found here. How do you use it? Well, there's a couple of things that you need to do. First, there's this helper, apputil CMake uh, helper that I will describe a bit later. Then you say uh, you want to append where CMake should look for the find button CMake that we specified before. And in my case, it's in the source directory of my repository slash CMake. Then we say find package button, that finds it. And then in the end you do target link libraries button button, which basically links against it. So now in C++ code, you can do include button, use all the API that it provides. I would say this is pretty simple, except for the part where you have to write this. Um, yeah, to set up VC package, this is inside the file that I mentioned before, like the helper utils file you need to basically tell CMake where to find VC package, and that is done via two ways. You first specify the toolchain file that VC package provides and the triplet. And here you basically pick it up from the two environment variables, VC package root and VC package default triplet, which I set when I build my project. Okay, so we covered the third party part, the static part. What about multiple platforms? What platforms can we target? Well, 
The application can run on Mac, Linux, Windows, iOS, and Android. And you can see some screenshots. I, it looks a bit ugly because I decided to put it all. You can see it on one single slide. But yeah, basically, you can use the API. It works. People that might have used VC Package know that VC Package doesn't provide support for mobile platforms. It only provides support for desktop platforms. So how can it run on mobile as well? Well, yeah, I have a custom fork where I add two triplets for iOS and for Android. VC Package is configurable in the sense that they ship their own default triplets for Mac, for Windows x86, x64, for Windows ARM, for Linux, static builds, non-static builds but it doesn't provide anything for mobile. But it allows you to write your own triplets. So I wrote my own triplets for iOS and Android. And then you kind of can get it to build some packages depending on the package. And what is also difficult is that there is no real good documentation on how to build CMake projects targeting an Android and iOS, you kind of need to scour the internet and get a bit here, get a bit there, put it all together and make it work. But it's possible. These are some of the iOS specifics that you need to do in your CMake project, not in the VC package part. You basically need to set all these uh, usual things that Xcode takes care of for you like uh, the info p list uh, stuff, like the identifier, the version, the name. Then, because Qt didn't really support building for iOS using uh, CMake, you need to specify a custom entry point manually, because if you don't do that, you run the app on iOS, and then it's going to say, oh, you started main instead of running Qt main wrapper, and that's going to fail. Please fix what you're doing wrong. So you need that part. It's kind of an implementation detail. You also need to be able to do code signing if you want to deploy to the device, because non-code signed code does not work on uh, devices, except for the simulator. And you need to specify the sysroot and the architectures, basically saying, do I want to build for device or for simulator, and, and which architectures do I want to support, like the new ARM, the old ARM, the new simulator, et cetera. For Android, you need some other bits. For instance, uh, how Qt is implemented for Android, uh, you all the Qt libraries are shared libraries that end up being DL opened. So you don't use that executable. You have to use that library to create a shared library. And that's kind of ugly, but that's how you have to do it at the moment. And you also need to specify basically chain load tool chains because Android provides their own CMake toolchain and then you want to use the VC package toolchain. So you need to tell VC package it's the main toolchain, please also chain load to the Android toolchain and like set up all the Android ABI specific things, uh, native API level, etc. And then the command line to build is a little bit scary because you need to specify where's Qt, where's SDK, where's the Android NDK, which ABI, you can see it's a little bit messy. But like once you run CMake, you run Make or whatever other generator you like, you then run Make APK. This is new in Qt 5.14 that Make APK calls Android Deploy Qt for you behind the scenes. So you get a blob that you can open, for instance, in Android Studio or with Qt Creator and just deploy it to the device or the emulator, and then it works. So to use everything that I've shown so far, you need Qt 5.14 because the static builds case was uh, implemented in Qt 5.14. Then for iOS, you need 3.15 because uh, CMake 3.15 because the iOS specific fixes in CMake are relatively new. You couldn't use it before. And then if you want to deploy from Qt Creator with Android, uh, you need to use Qt Creator 4.11, which is not yet out, it's like beta, but you can use it. And otherwise, you can, of course, use Android Studio. That's fine, too. And for iOS, you can't currently use Qt Creator because we didn't have enough time to implement support for that. Yeah, 
You can find the full source of the project on the link above and the fork for VC package, which contains the custom recipe and changes that I had to do to build Boton for the mobile platforms. And you can try to run it locally and see if it works for you or get inspired on how to create your CMake project that targets all the platforms. Thanks. That's all. If anybody has any questions. Thank you, Alexandru. First question. Uh, when do you think there will be really production support for that? You know, all, all those bindings for iOS, et cetera, et cetera. Production support in which part? Yeah, you, know, you know, the missing part from Android, from, from Creator, et cetera. I think we could be able to implement the iOS stuff for the next Qt Creator release. And everything else is kind of already there. People just have to use it and not be afraid from using a new Qt version or a new CMake version. Because, yeah, it's relatively recent development, so the minimum specs are quite high. Thank you. Thank you. What about UWP? I have not tried UWP. I know that VC package supports UWP. Uh, Qt supports it, but I haven't tried the combination of CMake and Qt and UWP. But I assume it should not be more difficult than what I had to deal with so far with iOS and Android. Um, on the slide where you showed all those uh, tons of parameters for Android compiling, yeah. uh, how do you, did you figure them out? Did you extract them from Qt Creator and put them in there? Or how did you get all those this, uh, you know, so 20 lines of code or whatever it is? So some of them are documented in the Android NDK documentation, like how to build manually with CMake targeting Android. And some of it, yes, you can look like at the files that Qt Creator generates and get inspired from that. And yeah, then scouring the internet until I got something that works. Latest question? So this was all with VC package, but CMake has other package managers, so which make um, which are easier to use than VC package on for Android, for example. So, and uh, the magic lines for Android are uh, so Qt Creator 4.11 will have all this behind the scenes, so it will simply work. So it's not a question; is I'm just trying to. Thank you for spreading the information. Okay, thank you. Okay, maybe we can end at that point. Thank you very much for your participation. Thanks.